Hello everyone and welcome to the 21st Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can work with reference counting in Cocoa. So um, I'll cover a little bit why we're doing this in a second, but just to recap, uh, this tutorial is a continuation of Lesson 20, so if you haven't watched Lesson 20, make sure you do. And basically in Lesson 20 I just talked about how we could use an NS Array controller to uh, display the contents of an NS table view and of course update the NS mutable array that holds all the content. So essentially our NS array controller controls between the model which is all the data in our NS mutable array and the view which is the data or what you see in the table view. So that's really all we uh, worked with is how to bind the NS array controller to the data and then bind it as well to uh, what the data is displaying on the view. So that's really all we learned in lesson 20. So this tutorial is going to be kind of a sidestep. I was originally going to show you how you could save and load data, but um, basically there was some weird issue under garbage collection in Lion for when you go to open a file. So for whatever reason in the NS document class, or not in the NS document class, but when you go to run NS open panel uh, through uh, the loading of a file in an NS document. For whatever reason, in garbage collection, the NS open panel does not really like you. So for uh, whenever you basically open a file in your application, if you went to file open, this is an NS open panel for anyone who is wondering. And that's just you know the open panel that you see when you go to open a document. And for whatever reason, uh, when I was browsing through in column view, different folders back and forth, it was shooting out random things in the console. And it was complaining, well, not random things, but it was always giving this continuous error every time I moved back and forth between folders. And um, I don't know what exactly is going on with uh, garbage collection and that uh, certain setup, but I'm going to assume that it's some weird framework thing with garbage collection and the NS open panel. Um, I've never had that problem before, so I'm just going to assume that it's uh, something under garbage collection. So, in light of that, I'm going to show you how you can do all this stuff in Retain World, which basically is reference counting. So, if you want to do reference counting, which is working with retain counts and whatnot, you want to disable garbage collection. And to do that, you can just go to your target of whatever your application is, build settings, type in gar, and you'll get garbage collection. And you can just change it to unsupported versus required, which we've been saying for uh, all these tutorials since we've been working in garbage collection. But if you want to do the coming tutorials in garbage collection as well, uh, it still does work. Um, I never actually got anything that you know, stop the application or hurt anything about it. It just gave random messages in the console. So if you want to keep going with garbage collection, by all means, you can keep going. I think it's uh, great. You know, it does get, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about memory management as much anyway. So, um, you know, with that, garbage collection is nice. And if you want to keep going with it, by all means, keep going. Um, because the next tutorial isn't going to kill you by any means, it just may give you some odd errors while you're browsing in column view. But anyway, with that, you can just turn off, uh, you just say garbage collection unsupported, and that means you are going to manually manage your memory through reference counting. So, with that, um, if you haven't watched the Objective-C tutorials, lessons 16 through 18, those are all in-depth tutorials on how memory management works, or reference counting to be specific. So if uh, you're really interested in the stuff, or you have, if you have no idea what I'm even talking about so far, then you're really going to want to watch the Objective-C tutorials because those will deeply explain uh, what I'm going to cover uh, in a very brief little few minutes here in this tutorial. So if you haven't watched, or uh, if you don't know anything about reference counting, make sure you watch the Objective-C tutorials because I'm just going to briefly go through this. So anyway, reference counting is, um, you know, some people like to make it a bigger deal than it is, but it really has, uh, you know, a very simple rule to it. The general idea is if you, uh, if some object, or you in this case, if you retain an object, which means you increment its retain count by one, 
you're just responsible for releasing it. So if you retain something, you release it. If you don't retain it, you don't release it. That's the idea. You basically own the object. If you say you retain it, you're adding the retain count uh, by one. And if you want to get rid of it, you have to just release it, and that will decrease the retain count by one. So it's a very simple process, but you just have to know some rules. So with that, the things that will ever uh, increment your retain count are as follows. So we have retain, which obvious it will retain, it will add to the retain count. So it will add plus, it will plus one your retain count. So if you had a retain count of one, or uh, if you had, a re yeah, if you had a retain count of one, and you say retain this object, you are going to boost the retain count to two. That's the idea of retain. So of course, if you retain something, you got to release it later. Now, if you also alloc something, so if you alloc init a new object, for example, anytime you alloc that object, you have now created an object with a retain count of one. So you have to also release that object somewhere, or else it will stay around forever, which is not good. Now, another case is when you say something new. So if I was to say uh, and a string new or uh, you know assignment new, any of those examples, basically that's another it's basically like saying alloc. Um, it's the same idea, but we tend not to use it. So it's um, it's an example that's sometimes thrown out, but um, basically it's just another thing that you should know if you see it in someone else's code that you would have to release any object uh, that starts or is called by new. So if I said an a string new, then you'd also have to release that as well. So the last thing as well would be if you copy an object, you have to release that object as well. So like in this example here, we're copying this NS string, we're going to have to release that object as well. So very simple, simple rules. If you retain, alloc, new, or copy, or rank for short, then basically you have to release that object. Very, very simple. So for our example here, in the assignments class, we have this NS string object called name. And let's say, for example, you know, we add a bunch of assignment objects to our table view, and then we delete a bunch of assignments. Um, you know, when we delete that, we're going to be releasing those assignment objects from the array because we're, you know, getting rid of them. So that's all right, and the assignment object will go away, but this NS string will stick around if we do not say specifically hey, when we release this assignment object, we got to also release all the items inside of it. So we have to explicitly say, for any object that we own, we have to explicitly say we're going to release that object. So this is very easily done in the method called dialloc. So any object that you have that contains other objects, so our assignment class has an NS string object, so generally, any class that you have that has an object, you're going to want to release that object as well. So in you'll pr pretty much any class you make with objects in it, you'll have a dialloc method in reference counting. So you're going to say name release. And that's just the name object. We're just going to say when the assignment object is deallocated, we're going to say, well, name, you're also going to be released as well. And that will get rid of the name, because then uh, the retain count of the name, if it starts with 1, will now hit zero, and when it hits zero, it goes away. So that's how um, basically that works. So now, the last step of doing a dialloc method though is saying super dialloc. Very important, you always have to include this because if you have any super class objects uh, that have to be released as well, then you know you gotta, you gotta call that super class's dialloc method. Very important. So that's all you have to do though. Uh, again, the only reason we're doing this is because we have our alloc, we're alloc initting an object right here, so the keyword here is alloc. That will make the name object a value or a retain count of one now. So we are responsible for releasing that because we allocated it. So that's very simple. So you might be thinking, well, what happens when we call our you know set name method? Well, of course, since we use our synthesize, this is all going to be handled for us. It will release the old object that was there and it will copy in a new object. That's basically the synthesize will handle all that for you. And I cover many of these, uh, setting up these methods by hand in the Objective-C tutorials if you're interested. 
So with that, let's head on over to our My Document class. Now, My Document has this NS Mutable Array, again, an object. So we're going to have to get rid of that if our document object goes away as well. So to do that, we simply have to say, well, we're going to deallocate this, or when we dealloc our document, so void dealloc, we are going to want to release the assignments. So we say assignments release. And of course, like I said before, we always have to say super dealloc, because we got to call that super class, whatever uh, is up in the super class, we have to dealloc those objects as well. So that's really all you have to do. And again, the only reason you're doing this is because right here you say NS Mutable Array alloc init. And that means that you have to, of course, release the object to get rid of that memory. Once you set it to zero, the memory is set to freed and you can now reuse it. So that's all you really have to do for um, you know reference counting in uh, Coco or Objective-C in this case, really. So the very simple rule, if you retain something, you got to release it. And it really doesn't get much more complicated than that. Um, you know, you can have many different things going on at the same time, but in all essence, that is the general rule of thumb. So anyway, I hope that uh, sums up what you have to do for memory management in these applications. It's no different than any other Objective-C class. Uh, it's all the same. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And I will see you next tutorial where we will get back to saving and loading data in our applications. All right, and I'll see you next tutorial.